Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, Crossing New Frontiers to Conquer Today's Challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East of the West. The word supercomputer was first used in 1967. Back in the early 1980s, I was the first person to be described as a massively parallel supercomputer scientist and later as an internet scientist. I was asked to describe who taught me parallel supercomputing. My answer is that I invented, not learned, practical parallel processing. By definition, it's impossible to learn a discovery that pre-existed but was not known. Similarly, you cannot learn an invention such as the parallel supercomputer that did not pre-exist as a supercomputer that can solve real-world problems back in the 1980s. My vision of myself, Philip M. Aguale, as a massively parallel processing supercomputer scientist that harnesses millions of processors is rooted mathematically on the laws of physics. I encoded some laws of physics into a system of partial differential equations of calculus that I then discretized as a large system of equations of algebra and then coded on singular processors that were tightly coupled to each other and that shared nothing between each other and that outlined and defined a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors. Back in the early 1980s, I was the first person to be described as an extreme-scale computational mathematician and later as an extreme-scale computational physicist. Back in the 1980s, I was abandoned by vector processing supercomputer scientists who thought I, was making, I wasn't making progress in discovering practical parallel processing. My progress was slow in part because I was trying to figure out the inner workings of the most complex supercomputing machinery ever built. I was trying to figure out how to use the new supercomputer to solve the toughest problems arising in science and engineering. For the 16 years that I studied full time in six universities in the United States, I studied mathematics, physics, and computer science. I had 16 years of scholarships, renewed annually, which in turn was proof that I was making progress across those 16 years and six universities. My contributions to science were acknowledged in the alumni magazines of those universities. Every three months, each of those six universities writes all its living alumni to inform them of its not most noteworthy contributions to society. On my 17th year in the United States, the sixth university that I attended produced a special edition on Philip M. Aguale that was titled, quote unquote, The Ways of Counting, that described him as changing the way we do mathematics and changing it from counting only one thing at a time to counting a billion things at once or counting in parallel. I was in the news headlines because I invented a new way of making supercomputers. In the old way, the supercomputer used only one processor to solve the toughest problems arising in mathematics and medicine and in science and engineering. In my new way, the supercomputer harnesses millions upon millions 
of processors and uses them to simultaneously solve a grand challenge problem that was divided into millions upon millions of smaller problems that will then be solved in a one problem to process so corresponded manner and solved at once. That special edition of a university alumni magazine also published a biographical article that described Philip Emma Aguale as quote unquote one of the world's fastest humans. That special edition of Philip Emma Aguale was mailed to all its 400,000 living alumni. According to the editor of that university alumni magazine, I was the first best scientist to be honored with a special edition on his contributions to science. Back in the 1980s, I worked alone because my parallel supercomputer research was dismissed as a blue sky project. Practical parallel processing is my signature invention. Parallel processing is the technology that changed the field of computer science and changed it the most. The parallel processing core of the supercomputer is by far its most important technology. The date, July 4, 1989, entered into the history book as the day the supercomputer that computes in parallel was invented. After the invention of practical parallel processing, the vector processing technology that previously powered every supercomputer became a non-factor in the manufacture of supercomputers. Thank you. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.